Hey guys, welcome to the first retouch part three. In this section, we're gonna be doing a lot of work with color. We're gonna go through and color her hair. We're gonna take care of this little area here, <laughs> this little gap area here. And we're gonna show you how to match the color between her face, her neck, and her body as well. So let's go ahead and start there because that's, that's an important part. Okay, so we're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna go ahead and just group it with itself. I prefer to work in groups. I find it keeps things really nice and organized and just makes things a little bit neater. Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is figure out the differences between skin color. And this is something that, you know, unless you are used to retouching, maybe you don't even think about. But um, let's just start by using the brush tool. I'm gonna sample this color. And this is just for, just kind of show you guys what we're, what we're working with here. All right, so I'm gonna cancel, sample some of like the uh, this is her arm here okay that's her neck and then like this is her face some lighter colors from her face so you can see there's actually like a pretty big difference in the colors like these two are from her arm these two are from her neck and these two are from her face so there is a big difference in color you can see these are a little bit more like a cooler color these have like more red in them these have less red, maybe a little bit more blue, and these are more on the yellow side. So what I wanna do is correct all these to bring them closer to the same, uh, basically the same values. So we're gonna do that using a color balance adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and grab our first color balance adjustment layer. We'll do this a couple times. First thing I wanna do is kinda of get an idea of where this actually is going to affect. So <laughs> this is, it seems weird, but I'm just gonna take this green slider and drag it all the way to the right. Okay. Now I'm doing this as like a visual thing just so I can see what I'm doing. So here on this color balance right there, uh, layer mask, I'm gonna hit controller command I, which is gonna invert that. And now I'm gonna paint white just over here on the neck. I'm just using a regular paintbrush to do this. So basically we're just using layer masks to define you know which, which areas are going to be affected by which adjustment layers. All right, and layer masks are really great because if you mess up, if you do that, and you color over her shirt, well, all I have to do is switch between white and black, which I can do so by hitting the X key on my keyboard. That's gonna switch those. Um, if I paint black on the layer mask, look at that, it's not affecting that area anymore. Pretty neat, huh? Well, you probably know already how to use layer masks already, but in case this is your first time ever using a layer mask, um, Congratulations, they're really, really great. It's actually surprising how long, personally, I used Photoshop without even, like, I didn't even know about layer masks for like the two, first two years of using Photoshop. Um, and I, I'm not sure how I got anything done. Layer masks are really great. Okay, so that's our first section there, all right? Now, obviously, we're not going to be changing this to the green. So let's go ahead and click on the adjustment layer itself, and I'm gonna just reset that, okay? So the layer mask is still intact, right? The layer mask, let's just make sure to paint this in here. If you ever wanna see what your layer mask looks like, by the way, just hold Alt or Option, click on your layer mask. Okay, so the layer mask itself is good, but the layer, like the, the colors of the adjustment layer of this color balance, um, we haven't done anything with. So we're gonna start off by saying like, I want this to be closer to that. So let's take a look here. I want, this looks a little bit like it has some blue in it, right? And I want less blue to match the face. So I'm gonna go over here. I have cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna choose blue. We're just gonna click over here and I'm gonna start hitting the down arrow a few times. And what that's doing is it's putting less blue in that area. It's taking away blue and then it's pushing it towards yellow. Now let's say I want a little bit of red in there too. I just click over here and I hit the up arrow a couple times. And that's gonna give me some red in that area. All right. And you know what? That starting, well, that looks pretty dang good. It definitely like takes away the problem that I had with it a little bit. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more red. All right, and remember as I'm moving these like it's definitely affecting the neck. So just, just so you know, is like I'm moving these sliders, the neck is getting affected. But it's not like, you know, these are not huge, huge adjustments. Just like subtle adjustments are gonna go a long way. All right, so I pulled down some blue, so going towards yellow and towards red. And let's just look at that before and after real quick. All right, 
that looks pretty good and you can see let's just add a little bit more red and take away a little bit more yellow there we go so now the neck matches the face color much much better you see before it looks like almost like deep it almost looks like gray grayish blue and now looking much better all right very cool and you're like whoa that was actually awesome and not too hard and you're right it was awesome and not too hard let's grab another color balance adjustment layer push this all the way towards green again and i'm going to hit controller command i on the layer mask and we're going to paint this visible on her arms because remember we wanted to match the color between her arms her hands her face and her neck we want all this skin to be in the same range right it's just uh gonna keep things looking a lot more real all right now this is not something where like you have to go in and make these layer masks absolutely perfect like you know i'm just using the brush tool to kind of paint these in now um that's it really is as good as you need to get i mean you can go in here and you know use the pen tool and you know spend four hours making your selections and stuff like that and if that is what you want to do then i'm definitely not going to stop you from it um i just don't think it's necessary get the job done spending you know just a couple minutes with a brush tool and a layer mask you don't need to go and make all your selections perfect i used to do that by the way <laughs> Uh, years ago, I would go through and I would like every time I wanted to change thing I'd go and like make a perfect layer mask and try to like use a pen tool or other selections and all that stuff um, and like At the end of the day I Couldn't really tell the difference from when I used to do that and when I just did it like this with a brush tool So now I do it like this All right, that looks actually really kind of cool and totally weird um let's go back to our color balance i'm going to reset this and we'll just zoom out and say like what does this need to look like that maybe it needs a little more red so let's grab the red and i'm going to put the up arrow a couple times get a little bit more red in her arm so there's the before and the after with that all right and that actually looks pretty good i i gotta say so there's the before and the after, just kind of matching the skin from her face to her neck to her arm. Okay, cool, that looks great. So some really nice color correction there. We're going to go ahead and make a new layer, okay, and group it with itself, and now we're gonna work on the hair. So let's go ahead and zoom in. First thing I wanna do is take care of this little area here. Um, to make a really nice clean line around the neck, I'm going to use the pen tool because basically I want a selection. Let's just draw it out here. I want a selection that looks like this or whatever. So I can like, you know, fill it in and not have to worry about painting over the neck. The pen tool is a really great tool for that. So I'm going to hit P for the pen tool and basically click and drag here a couple of times around the neck. Okay. Looks pretty good. You can close it out if you want to. There we go. Now, if you need to move any of these points, just hold down the controller or the command key, and you can click on any of these points and move them around. All right. There we go. Now, we're going to make this into a selection. I'm going to right click and go down to Make Selection. And we're going to feather that by two pixels. Okay, so now this area is a selection, and you guys know how selections work. When a selection is active, you can only paint in the selection. That's, you know, that's how it works. You can only affect whatever's inside of the selection. So now, I'm going to clone stamp the hair from over here to over here. Um, one thing I do want to do is I want to hide the selection. So I want the selection active, right? But I don't want to see these little marching dots. So I'm going to hit Control or Command H. Now. If this is the first time you hit controller command H, it may ask you if you want to hide Photoshop or hide the extras, go to hide the extras. Okay, controller command H just hides the selection. So now I'm able to clone stamp from up here. Let's make sure we're on a blank layer here. We want to make sure we change our clone stamp. The sampling current layer is going to do nothing because remember we're on a blank layer. 
So I want to make sure that I'm sampling the current and below. That's going to sample this and all the rest of the stuff. So let's go ahead and hold Alt or Option. Sample our point right up there and start painting it down. There we go. Yeah, if I want a little bit more hair detail, I can I can add that as well. Okay, there we have it. So because we made a really nice selection there, I don't have to worry about like, you know, for instance, like I don't have to worry about painting on the neck. It's just not gonna happen. Like the only part of this image I can paint on is right there. So since we have that selection, it was just really easy to go in there and fill in that area with that hair. Okay, so let's go ahead and deselect. There's the before and the after with that. Really pretty quick, pretty easy. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is work on some color and some highlights with our hair. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go to solid color. All right. We did this before in um, in one of the other sections when we were working with hair, but we'll do it again. I wanna change my layer blend mode from normal down to overlay. Okay, so we've chosen a color here. Doesn't really matter which color you choose, we're gonna change it. My color fill layer mask, I'm gonna hit controller command I to invert the layer mask. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and start painting this over top of the hair. All right. Kind of looks cool with that red. I mean, it doesn't look real at all, but it does kind of look cool. All right, I'll go back in and clean it up and stuff like that in just a little bit. Just paint black on the layer mask. There we go. Okay, so there's our red. Now what I want to do is double click right here and change the color to something that we actually want. All right, whoa, she looks like Shakira. Um, let's go ahead, something like this. All right, and we can decide like how red we want it to go or how yellow, I, you know, I think in this case we should definitely choose something that's um, realistic. So like this is too saturated All right, and that's starting to look a little bit more real. You can see over here, much too saturated. Over here, starting to look real. Okay, let's hit okay. Let's just turn this off and on, kind of see how it affects this area. Now, I'd like this to just affect the highlights of the hair. So we're gonna double click on this color fill adjustment layer. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, and I'm gonna click and drag from the left to the right and what it's gonna do is it's gonna make this layer invisible where the shadows are, okay? Anything that's darker than that, this layer is gonna be invisible. So you can see it's just visible on the highlights now. All right, now let's go ahead and choose our color again. All right, and our hue, we're just gonna come up a little bit, a little bit more yellow, bring our saturation down a little bit. All right. And here on my layer mask, I don't need this to affect everything, including like the area that already has like shine and highlight towards the edges. I'm mostly doing it for the internal area of the hair there. All right. Cool, that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll just bring it a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna duplicate this layer again and this time, let's go back to this like bright red here, pink, whatever it is. And this time I only want to affect just even more of the highlights. So just like just that, or like just that, for instance. So I'm gonna go back in here, double click on my layer, and I'm gonna start changing around my blend if properties. So it really is just the highlights that are affected here. All right, there we go. So now with just the highlights affected, we're gonna go double click here and I'm gonna change the color again. All right, let's hit okay. And let's turn on that before and the after. 
I find that you, you know, generally I try not to go too crazy with hair because it's like, you know, can get to look not real pretty quickly. Um, but that's, that's starting to look pretty good. All right, now let's add some red undertones to the hair. I'm gonna hit Controller Command J on this layer. We'll go back to red so we can see what we're doing. And this time, instead of affecting just the highlights, we're gonna hold Alt or Option, and I'm gonna go from the other side to start affecting just the shadows. So you can see now it's not affecting the highlights at all, it's just affecting those shadows. Okay, now we choose the right color by double clicking here and we go to a little bit more red. All right, some nice saturation in there and a little bit of darkness in there as well. Let's hit okay and see what that looks like before and the after. Oh yeah, I like that nice like bit of red in there. Now, I actually think some of this in her face would be kind of nice too. And to be totally honest, I was not planning on doing this, but let's go ahead and create a solid color adjustment layer. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go down from normal down to overlay again. Okay, I'm gonna invert my layer mask and then I'm gonna paint this on her face. And again, I'm gonna be totally honest, I've never done this before, what I'm doing right now. Um, I just think it might be really cool or it might totally not work. And then you just delete the layer. So um, <laughs> never be afraid to play around in Photoshop because you just delete the layer. Let's double click here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and tell this to not be visible where my underlying layers highlights are, okay? So just the shadows. All right, see how that's like grabbing like the shadow area of the face, which is kind of nice. And now I'm able to change like my color so like if i wanted blues to show up on the face i could do that um if i wanted like yellows or these nice reds to show up i can do that too and now i can just kind of like say oh you know what the shadows i want to be bright like bright white or black or any color in between all right there we go the reason i was thinking to do this is because there we go, that looks pretty good. I was thinking that this color, that red that I added, would be kind of nice like reflected in the face. So that, yeah, it looks pretty good. It's too saturated, right? It's like, it's a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and lower down the saturation. Hit okay, let's turn this off and on. See what it does. But it, it really does a nice job like adding, adding a bit of like life into the skin, in my opinion. It's maybe a little bit. This is one of those subtle things. And again, I, I really did. This is the first time I've ever done this, but um, it is working exactly how I wanted. You see how the skin looks like pale and like not a lot of color here? Just adding that adds a little bit more color, which especially combined with what we just did with our hair, I think really does a nice job to bring, bring all that detail out. All right, let's lower the opacity to this one just a little bit. All right, beautiful. So let's see this layer before and after. Pretty nice. Let's lower the opacity of this one as well. All right, and now on a layer above those, I'm just gonna take care of some flyaways. So we're gonna hit J for our um, content aware heel. And I'm just gonna paint on these like flyaways here. And my tool is gonna do the rest. It's gonna take care of getting rid of all this stuff. Thanks, Content Aware Heal. You're the best. You're welcome, Aaron. I think you're great also. Um, when you start having conversations with your Content Aware Heal, tool that's when you know it's um that's how you know you're crazy just in case you guys were wondering <laughs> all right there we go just paint away all this stuff like this little stuff like that in there like if you you don't really want to get rid of all that stuff because it's just going to stop looking like hair you know if you like 
you make the edge too perfect it's like eh, hair doesn't do that especially not this kind of hair maybe if it was like straight slick black back like black hair then like sure but yeah this kind of hair just it's just kind of gonna do this all right so mostly i'm just taking care of like the the flyaways that are like crazy far out there all right cool looking great let's go ahead and zoom out and see this what i did on the face it looks great but i think it's a little bit too much so i'm just going to lower the opacity just a little bit more all right there we go all right so we've matched the face color remember this <laughs> you're like oh yeah we did a lot we matched the face neck and arms we worked on coloring the hair we've filled in this hole and we've done flyaways see the before and the after with that pretty awesome and the last thing i want to do is just affect the green in her shirt so i'm going to grab adjustment layer we're going to go to hue saturation because i want to pinpoint just that green i'm going to choose over here where it says master we choose greens and then I'm going to use my eyedropper to make sure that I am affecting these greens. Okay, and now I can simply increase my saturation or decrease my saturation on those greens. And you know what? I'm going to decrease it because I, I think it's just, it helps me focus on my subject a little bit more, which I, I, I want that. <laughs> I want that. I want to focus on my subject in the portrait. All right. That's great. Let's go ahead and look at the before and the after with this section. So color as well as a little bit of retouching. Really nice. And now let's see the before and the after from the whole thing. There's a before, still really nice. The after is just a heck of a lot more striking. And if the hair is a little bit too saturated, which I think still it may be, all you have to do is go in here and lower the opacity of these layers that affect the hair color. All right. There we are. Okay, that's the end of the next section. We'll see you guys in the next section.